Welcome to the Widow's Well. Today we are going to look at the question, who is the seed of Abram? And we will have a part one and a part two. And that is just so that every concept is um, taken in better by us. If we take one concept at a time, it is easier to build a upon it and really retain all these truths in our heart so that we can really start to understand uh, what scripture actually teaches about it. So firstly, let us uh, share the screen and then we will go to Romans 9. Again, I'm using the New King James Version just to make reading easier. But as I said in, a, in one of my previous videos, if you want to study doctrine, it works best to use the King James Version. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not like what they say, King James only. Uh, I don't want to prescribe to anybody what to do because I'm just your fellow disciple um, studying with you and sharing a bit of the things that I have been given. Um, but I really have found that using the King James Version has helped me to, to um, compare scripture with scripture and to, um, it just makes it, e it makes it easier for me. I have found that to be true. Um, now, if we go to Romans 9 from verse 6 here, so our question is, uh, who is the seed of Abram? Okay, so it says, yeah, uh, Romans 9 from verse 6 to verse 8. Uh, but it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abram, but in Isaac shall your seed be called. That is, those who are children of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of promise are counted as the seed. So the main thing to take away there is, who is the seed of Abram? Um, in Isaac shall your seed be be called. Now in part two, you will see there's a deeper aspect to this, but let's just take that in for now. Um, because Abram had, um, he didn't just have one son. He had um, a son with Hagar, uh, and that was Ishmael. And then he had the son with Sarah, his wife, um, which was Isaac. And then later, he also married another woman um, and had children with her. So Abram actually did have more than one son. and But the scriptures teaches um, that in Isaac shall your seed uh, be, be called. Um, so that is what I'd like us to take away from the it specifically says that not those that are the children of the flesh or the children of God but the children of promise are counted as the seed now if we go to John 8 um we see the same thing with that Jesus taught uh, regarding um, Abram's seed. So let us read what Jesus said. And this he said to those uh, Jews that believed on him. So let us just go right back there. Um, so if you look here in verse 31, we see there it says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him. So it's important to realize that this was spoken to those who believed him. He says to them, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then they start to speak against him and say they are 
Abram's descendants and they've never been in bondage. And what does he mean with being free? Um, and then Jesus answers this very important section to them. Now, remember, they were those that believed on him and they they claim to be Abram's descendants. And then Jesus says to them, I know that you are Abram's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abram is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abram's children, you would do the works of Abram. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abram did not this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. So this is very important. Jesus yes tells us the same thing as what we read here in, in Romans 9, namely that they are not children because they are the seed of Abram. And the children of the flesh are not counted as the children of God. Okay, so this is a very important aspect that we need to um, understand. And that is that the Bible teaches that the seed is a spiritual seed, the children of promise. Now, if you've ever heard of the Abram Accords, um, you will know that in this time that we live in, people um, are desperate for making peace. And so that, for example, Donald Trump um, set up what's called the Abram Accords. And that is, it's not just Donald Trump, but it was, he was sort of the one that, you know, was seen as the one that brought these um, Abram Accords. And that was a, it is a, a, um, a desire for to make peace in the Middle East. And so what he said is that, well, everybody there is actually sons of Abram. But as you can see, that it will just lead to a false peace because that is not what the Bible teaches. It it does, the Bible does not teach that we are all, um, since we're all sons of Abram, you know, that, that, um, Everybody is the seed of Abram. So we are, while we are to love other people and to and to to bring them the gospel, we by telling lies is not ever ever going to bring to true peace because as Jesus said, it's the truth that will set us free. All people are invited to be in Christ and to be the children of the promise, which is by faith, as we saw in our earlier videos, um, that the promise is made um, through grace by faith in Jesus Christ. And that has been open 
for all men for the last 2,000 years since Jesus came. So nobody is excluded. Jesus Christ came and he um, abolished racism, 